Hey guys, so I wanted to share some of my kind of uh, org mode customizations and there's nothing too fancy again, uh, I'll be showing you kind of here on the left I have kind of uh, the plan of what we'll be looking at today and here on the right I have my configuration so uh, in case you don't know you can get all of this configuration again from GitHub so it's up there, I'm going to put the link in the description. Now, if we go to kind of customizing org mode last time we kind of take took a look at the syntax and other things. Uh, this time, so there are some variables that are interesting for us to look and there are also some kind of packages that uh, are auxiliary with regards to org. Now, the first thing that I'll say is that uh, you, if you want to customize org mode, you have you can use the meta x command org customize. And this opens up kind of the group, uh, the customization groups for org mode. So you can click on any one of these in order to open kind of the group, which is a category again for customization. So for example, I can go to org startup and these variables in particular for the org startup, they are very nice for us to look at. And an alternative way is by using kind of a, a Helm and Helm gives us kind of listings of stuff based on fuzzy matching. So if I press control H and then V in order to describe variables, I can begin typing org and then startup. And you notice that I get a little list of the variables that are available. So as an example, if I describe the org startup folded, you'll notice that this essentially determines kind of whether or not the section headers, kind of these headlines, they are folded or not upon startup. So by default, this is the value is true, so which you represent by T in the next list. And if I execute this, nothing is going to happen. But if I want, if I don't want my kind of my org both documents to appear kind of folded, I can set this to nil. And then if I execute this little Piece of uh, piece of Lisp, I get no result. But notice that if I go to this other buffer and I use the revert buffer uh, function, I in my case I have it bound to the F5 key. If I do this revert buffer, you notice that I now am kind of unfolding everything. So by default, all of your org mode buffers they are going to be unfolded if that's what you want. You can also define kind of folding. Uh, on a file by file basis by using this startup kind of keyword and then giving it the either show all if you want to unfold or fold if you want to see everything folded for a particular file. I'll be taking a look at the keywords uh, more in depth later, but as of right now, you, uh, this is something interesting to know. Now, some other variables, you can also kind of uh, change the indentation rules for org files. So this variable, which is org startup indented, it essentially kind of adds a visual indentation to your org mode files. So if I execute this and uh, then change to this buffer and revert it, you notice that I got some empty space here on the left that got added. Now, the file itself did not change. So the raw version of this file is always the same. There is always going to be two spaces in this case between uh, these, uh, the beginning of the line and uh, this beginning of the function. It's just that Emacs, it is, excuse me, it is kind of a pushing text to the right whenever it prints. So the more indented you are, so you'll notice that you get more indentation, the more further down into the hierarchy. So if I make a sub subsection, as an, as an example, if I make this, so notice that I get kind of indented even further down. Now, also what I can do is I can use this variable, which is org startup with inline images. And this is again, as at your preference. So in this case, I'm setting it to true. And this essentially means that by default, Emacs is going to print the links to images as I shown kind of in the last uh, part. So if I go to the file that we were editing before, go to my home folder and then org basics. Notice that this is already kind of uh, unfolded because of the variable that I set earlier. And if I go down, you'll notice that I have kind of the Emacs logo here. So it's a bit large, a bit too large for the buffer, but you'll notice it's there. And uh, again, you can always toggle this behavior by using the meta or by using a keyword. So in this case, in fact, I can activate this for a single buffer by using the startup option, which is inline images. And just for information. So if you want to kind of enable this on a buffer by buffer basis, instead of doing it globally, as this variable indicates. Uh, another fancy, this is more on the on the side of appearance, but a fancy package that you can use with the org. There are actually two of them. So the simplest of them is org bullets and you install it again by using the use package statement. And then you do need to configure it. And essentially what this configuration does is it adds a hook. 
So hooks, they are essentially kind of uh, functions that get called whenever you enter a mode. So in this case, whenever I enter the org mode, I'm going to call this lambda function and the lambda functions are essentially kind of anonymous functions if you're thinking of uh, JavaScript. So I call this anonymous function and what it does is it executes org bullets mode one, which enables again org bullets inside of the buffer as a minor mode. So in other words, whenever I enter a org mode buffer, I'm going to enable this mode. And this mode, it essentially kind of displays again, it replaces these kind of asterisks with Unicode bullets. So if I execute this code, I can then revert this buffer. And you notice that I not only remove kind of the leading stars, I also get this kind of nice UTF-8 uh, Unicode representation of kind of uh, the bullets. This is just visual again on the raw kind of a uh, org file, you're not going to see the bullet, but uh, Emacs is displaying that so that it looks nicer. An alternative to org bullets is kind of a more evolved version. So it essentially gives the same uh, kind of settings, but it also adds a uh, kind of Unicode arrows when you look at listings. So in fact, I'm going to close out of Emacs just so that I don't get any, just so that I don't get any conflict. And then I'm going to go back to my org customizations and we'll execute this little code block. So if I execute this, the procedure is the same. I use the package org superstar. And again, I just changed the hook. So I'm using the org superstar mode. And if I press control C, control C once again to execute this, I'm going to open up my configuration. My init.org. And notice this is not a, maybe this is not a good example, but let's give it a org basics because this one has a list and you notice that the list here it displays kind of with nice unicode arrows and this just replaces the plus the pluses visually so this is not really changing anything in the raw output this is always going to be kind of regular plain text so a final kind of a nice fancy little package that uh, you can use is evil org and uh, this essentially manages kind of the integration between evil and uh, org mode so essentially it makes it in such a way that I can even show it on the right. You essentially can use kind of, instead of using arrow keys in order to move things around with the meta key, you can actually use the HJK and out keys. So I can use meta and then K in order to bring an item up in a list. I can also use meta and then J to bring it down. So I can also indent things by using meta and then the H and L keys. So L is going to bring it again lower in the hierarchy and H is going to bring it up. So that's a pretty nice behavior. And this also works with lists. So uh, sorry, with uh, headers. So notice that I can indent and uh, kind of, uh, again, indent this further. I can also do the same thing using the kind of the, um, the less than sign and the, and the more than sign. So for example, by pressing this uh, as I would, for example, indent in Vim. So I can also do this, use this kind of key binding to indent it using the the less than and the more than and the greater than sign. And the one thing that I forgot to mention about tables is that you can also uh, manipulate them using the meta and then the direction keys. So if I want to switch the columns around, I can do so. But I can also do this with the, the HTK and L keys thanks to evoorg. So I can use meta and then L to, for example, switch the input with the output. And accordingly, again, can bring it back with meta and then H. And the uh, reorganize lines in tables is the same thing. So I can bring this two to the bottom, for example, using meta and then J and K. So one nice little feature that uh, uh, that evil org introduces is that you can also kind of move between sections, uh, section headers using the G key. So by pressing G and then J, I can go back one section at a time. And uh, by using G and K, I can go up. So. This is one nice thing. Again, if I go to the to this lower level, notice that I get jumped uh, from similar header to similar header essentially, and then I can continue going to upper layers. Finally, uh, evil work also allows me to kind of uh, work with subsections and uh, code block and code blocks by means of text objects. So I use the AE text object to refer to kind of a source code blocks and the uh, sections. So for example, if I go on top of this section header, I can press V and then AE in order to select the whole thing. And the notice that if I go up here, I can do the same thing to select only this part. 
So I can, for example, use the regular motion. So I can press D and then AE in order to delete the whole kind of a section. If I want to delete everything, I can go to the top here. Notice that this is the only kind of upper layer. And then I press DAE and I get rid of everything. So I'm going to press U to kind of undo that. And this also applies to kind of source code blocks. So for example, I can press uh, V and then AE and notice that I'm selecting the whole thing. Additionally, if I had a second source block, so just so that I can show it, I can also move between them by using the G and then the A and then the J and K key. So G J is going to bring me down. G K is going to bring me up again uh, between the similar tags. So with regards to Evo Org, uh, the last thing that I'll say is that you can configure it again using this this part of the code, which is also on my config. And the only thing that's different, so you notice that you use a hook to kind of install it. And then you also can set key themes. And the key themes, they are essentially kind of categories for different key bindings. So in this case, I am, enabled, I am enabling most of them. And you can also use the org customized kind of key binding if you want to take a look and browse at the other categories for key themes that you have. So that's pretty much it for this time, guys. I'll be seeing you next time. And thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.